Back in 2003, a TV show aired on a late night TV program called Adult Swim, a show that I, at the age of 19, had the privilege of watching. That show was Try Gun. It was a show that was so overflowing with wit and humor and charm that I almost hated it and almost didn't even finish it. Let me explain. Trigon wasn't my first anime ever. Actually, far from it. I cut my teeth back in the day on such things as like Dragon Ball Z. And I'm talking about the Dragon Ball Z before it was streamlined and edited to like, you know, half the length. You know. The ones that were drawn out. I was also, like I said, 19, so I was a little bit older, and I was in a phase where I was into much more mature-oriented content, so the kitty humor stuff was phasing out for me, and I was in this, in this mind frame that I wanted some real mature adult content that I really wanted to watch at that point in my life. So the silly humor stuff wasn't exactly what was resonating with me at that second in time. Also keep in mind, at this point in my life, I'd been through some major heavy hitters like Vampire Hunter D, Akira, Ghost in the Shell, and what a lot of people would consider to be the greatest anime of all time, Cowboy Bebop had already aired. So when Trigun comes out and Vash is doing some very Vash things for the sake of comedy, I wasn't initially sold. And by the time he starts saying stuff like love and peace, love and peace. I almost bailed on the show entirely. Luckily for me though, I kept going. Partly because I had a friend who was obsessed with it and kind of wouldn't shut up about it. And also because, you know, back in the day, it, if it was on TV, that's you kind of watched what was on TV because, you know, if you didn't, you didn't watch anything because that was all you had. There was no such thing as streaming. You might be able to, you know, pedal your little bicycle. Actually, I had a car at that point in time. You might be able to drive your car down to the video store and rent yourself a VHS from the Blockbuster. Actually, at this time, it would have been DVDs and you would have had access to actual like box sets at Blockbuster as to what DVDs you got. You could rent them one at a time <laughs> and they would normally have two to three episodes on them. And then you could only get like certain things that were super popular because, you know, no one gave a fuck about anime in 2003. Let me tell you. Anyway, I got off topic here. What was I talking about? Anyway, long story short, I stuck with the show and it really kind of strings you along and it kind of drip feeds you some mysteries and slowly gets into its character development and it gets you to really care about these characters and really gets you invested, involved, and makes you fall in love with them to the point where by the time you get to episode 17 and the show really opens up, you're hooked. You can't, there's no going back now. And by the time you get to episodes 25 and 26, and it just straight kicks your teeth down your throat, you're a changed person, and you'll never be the same again. I know that sounds a bit like hyperbole, but it's also kind of true. Okay, now before I go on, I'm going to give a spoiler warning for the Trigun anime. I am going to discuss the Trigun anime all the way up to and including the ending. Actually, I kind of especially want to discuss the ending. I'm also not really a video essay person here on the channel. That's not what I do. I mostly read books and do manga read-throughs on this channel. As a matter of fact, that's kind of why I wanted to make this video is because I'm getting ready to do a manga read-through for Trigun because I have never read Trigun. As important as this anime is to me in my life, I've never read Trigun, so we're going to do that here on the channel. And I just kind of wanted to get my thoughts down as to how I feel about this before I moved into that, kind of in preparation and also kind of just because I really want to talk about this. I never have made a true video about Trigun. I have said several times on the channel that Trigun is one of my favorite pieces of media of all time. Not anime, not TV show, not movie, media, period. And I, I just want to discuss why for me, this is so special. Trigun isn't an anime about good versus evil. It's more like a battle of ideologies and a battle of ideas. A battle of ideas between two men and two brothers. 
It's the idea of what is right, what is wrong, and who gets to choose. Or at the very least, that's what resonates with me. There are so many other different layers to this. There are so many different levels of morality that are discussed in this anime. There are so many different characters that come at it from different levels of gray, different perspectives, different ideas, like Meryl or Millie or the insurance agency or Wolfwood and his faith. All of these are valid, and all of these I'm pretty much going to ignore here in this video because that's not what I want to talk about. But the point is there's so many ways to look at this and so many things that you can get from it. And if for some reason what resonated with me isn't what resonated with you, that's perfectly okay. This is deep enough for all of us, I'm sure. And actually, if you want to go ahead and jump down in the comments and let me know exactly which part of it and which characters resonated with you, I would love to hear about it. Anyway, as you go back to the beginning and you watch through the shows and you kind of go through all of this with the characters as they move through and you start to piece together all those little mysteries and you start to get through all the goofy stuff and you kind of roll your eyes at the goofiness because it's just so over the top. And at some point you stop rolling your eyes and you start laughing along with Fash. When he laughs, you laugh and you start to get a little bit more invested and you just start to really care so much throughout the course of this. And it's both the character work and the mysteries. Like, who is Vash? Why does he have a bounty on his head when he clearly refuses to kill? Why can he do some of the things that he can do? Especially when it comes to plants. What the f*** are plants? But mostly it's just an amalgamation of great character work, phenomenal music, and just heart, so much heart baked into this story. And if you would have put all of that together and just let it ride as that at face value, it probably would have been one of my favorite anime, period. And that's even without the ending that kind of broke me. Also, I want to point out that it's an ending that was kind of made up for the anime as far as I'm aware, which makes me even more curious to get into the manga because apparently the thing that resonates so strongly with me from this adaptation isn't even in the manga mmm we'll see how that goes but like I just said you could just roll with these characters and I'm on board I'm down I mean these are just some of the most lovable characters imaginable even my hardened 19 year old self couldn't help but fall in love with them I mean to the point where when you finally realize that Wolfwood is a gung-ho gun and he's been sent there by knives and he's been essentially working for knives the entire time, you feel betrayed. And then for him to eventually turn back around and eventually stand in solidarity with Vash and turn and defy his orders from knives because he's learned a new way of living from Vash. As much as he disagrees with him, as much as he butts heads with him, and as mad as Vash can make Wolfwood because he's so stubborn and he just ignorantly refuses to listen to reason, Wolfwood still is inspired to stand and face his original mentor and and turn on knives in them and stand with Vash in the end. And all it does is get him killed. And you have to stand there and watch him die. And it just about breaks you. Would I be wrong now to ask for your forgiveness? It's so well done. It's amazing. And that's just one little piece of it. And honestly, what I'm really here to talk about is Vash and Knives. And just the sheer subtlety and maturity that those two characters are handled with. Like Vash, for example, is a pacifist. He doesn't kill people. And this is a lesson that he learned from Rem. Nobody has a right to take the life of another person ever. And he is the most empathetic person imaginable with an absolutely unwavering desire to see nobody die ever. And I almost said an unwavering desire to do the right thing, but that's not necessarily true because sometimes not killing isn't necessarily the right thing to do. Sometimes the right thing to do isn't even black and white. 
Sometimes it's very hard to understand what the right thing even is in any given situation. Now on the flip side of that, Knives is a realist and he is mistreated by the humans for being a plant, essentially mistreated for being different, which is one of the most human and relatable things imaginable. Pretty much everybody in the world is going to be born with enthusiasm and optimism and all these wonderful things, hope, etc. And then eventually you're going to start to grow up and you're going to start to live life and life's going to just beat you down and it's going to throw things at you and it's going to hurt you and it's just bad things are going to happen. And if you're not careful, life will take your hope, life will take your optimism and it will rob you of your enthusiasm. And Knives just wants a connection, but he wants that connection with the one person that he's similar to and the one person that he can relate to and that's his brother. And he will force that connection on Vash if he has to. In the beginning, I said this isn't a story of good and evil. And I was very careful just now to describe Vash as a pacifist and Knives as a realist. Because in the end, that's how I really see these people. I don't see them as good and evil. I see them as a pacifist and a realist. It's just that the pacifist has a little bit too much heart and the realist has let his negativity get a little bit too much power. Take, for example, the scene with the spider. Vash wants to save both the butterfly and the spider. Oh. Even after Knife points out that it's not even possible to save both, because even if you were to save both, the spider will eventually die from starvation. What are you talking about? Unless the spider caught the butterfly, it would die of starvation anyway. You can't save both, don't you know that? Even Rem is much more realistic in her viewpoint. But I'm not wrong about this, Rem. If you just keep saving the butterflies, the spiders will die. Yes, but wanting to save both is just a naive contradiction. When Knives points this out to her, she even acknowledges that Knives is right, but tries to make the point that life is more important than that. And even if he is right, nobody should make that decision so easily, nor is that decision necessarily yours to make. Knives will eventually ultimately lose the battle with his own vindictiveness and he will attempt to kill everybody except for him and his brother. And he's going to drag Vash along with him into what his idea of this new reality should be, even if he has to do it kicking and screaming. And as the story goes on, making Vash understand that sometimes death is necessary isn't even enough anymore. He's going to try to make him see that sometimes you have to be the one to kill the spider. He ultimately makes him kill an entire city with the July incident. And even that didn't change Vash as a person or who he was to his core, because ultimately at the end of the day, Knives was the one who pulled the trigger. Although Vash definitely carries with him the guilt of what happened that day. So we're going to build the story to the point where Legato's going to show up and Legato's going to do it to him again. But this time Legato's going to make the stakes smaller and more personal. And this time Vash is going to have to pull the trigger, making him literally choose between killing the spider and saving the butterflies. And so the story brings us to the scene with Millie and Meryl. And me, as a viewer, as a watcher, I'm waiting for the deus ex machina. I'm waiting for that loophole. I'm waiting to figure out just how Vash is gonna pull this off and just how Vash is gonna get out of this. You're like on the edge of your seat, biting your nails, watching, but you know in your heart of hearts that there is some way that we're getting out of this. We always have, we always do. This is a happy anime. This is Trigun. Knives doesn't get to win like this. This is Vash. He always finds a way. What the f was that? What the f is the message? What is the message that I'm supposed to get from that? What is the message that this anime is trying to tell me right now? That Knives was right all along? Uh, that there's no hope for anything? I mean, I know that he's right when it comes to the spider and shit. We all know that he's right. We all know that in this situation, he actually did the right thing by pulling the trigger. But that's not 
What should have happened? Fash didn't deserve that. What is happening in this show right now? And why am I so conflicted as a viewer? Maybe the point is that Knives is right and that sometimes you do have to kill the spider to save the butterflies, but it shouldn't be easy. Like Rem said, maybe the price should be heavy and it should weigh on you. Is that the message? Because if that's the message, it's definitely weighs on Vash and he makes it look heavy. And if you would have told me 20 episodes ago that this was the direction that this anime was going to go and that this was the how dark and how heavy this was going to end up being on my poor soul, I definitely would not have believed you. But here we are. This is what this is where it took us. And before we get into anything that happens in this episode, I just want to say how profound of a decision it was to strip all music out of this episode. There is nothing but silence and the sounds of clicks and guns and fires and the running and the panting and the... Oh my gosh, the sound design with no music makes it so much more visceral to watch. You end up that much more on the edge of your seat just by the simple decision not to include music. And in the end, Vash will come out on top and he will take down knives. So here we are with the most difficult, necessary evil of all necessary evils. We have to kill the spider and not only is it the spider it's the spider that took out most of humankind took out basically all of our hopes of finding a proper planet to live on but also it's your brother but this is the lesson we learned right that sometimes it's necessary to kill the spider so now we take everything we've learned and we've put down knives what are you doing vash vash no, that's not the lesson we learned, Vash. Like, we just went through this. Isn't this the whole point? Wasn't this the point of watching this? Wasn't this the point of getting to this point? What's going on here? Vash, my man, do you have any idea how hard this has been to get here? Do you have any idea how close you were to death just fighting him and instead of put him down? Put him down is what you should do. Do you have any idea how much easier Vash's life would be if he would just put him down right here? No, he doesn't do it. Vash chooses the other road and he chooses to lay down the weapons, pick up his brother, he even lays down his coat and walk off with him to take knives with him into the future, into his future now. And it just ends. And then you get to figure out what that meant. What did any of that even mean? What was the point of him having to kill Legato to save the girls? What was the point if he's not going to then use what he learned there to kill knives? So what was the message even at all? Maybe the message was sometimes killing is necessary. Maybe the message was nobody has the right to take another person's life. Maybe... The message is both at the same time. Maybe the answer is neither. Maybe all we can do is the best we can do at any given moment in time with any given decision that we're given at that time. Maybe we just do our best to always do the right thing. And maybe we won't always succeed. Maybe sometimes we won't do the right thing. Maybe sometimes we fail or we f up or we do the wrong thing. But maybe it's never too late to try again. Maybe it's not too late to do the right thing next time. Maybe there's still a chance to move forward. And maybe it's not too late for knives either. And if it's not too late for knives, it's it's not too late for any of us. 
Anyway, everybody, as usual, the link for my Discord's in the description below. The link for my Patreon's in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> hey, they seem to be getting along really well. The birds of a feather have flocked together. <laughs> <laughs>